Greetings, Gorlocks. We regret that we cannot enjoy your company in person this weekend, but we are so glad that you are joining us for our annual homecoming events. Like so many events this year, it is a virtual one, a stay homecoming as we've called it. The nature of events in 2020 only underscores how important it is to create opportunities like this to connect with one another in whatever form we can. There are a variety of interactive activities for you to enjoy this weekend, so we hope you can try them out and perhaps learn something new about your classmates. Here at your alma mater, we have been hard at work creating new ways to help you connect with your 200,000 fellow alumni, including new opportunities for mentoring and engaging with Webster and others in your field. We are excited to unveil some of those initiatives in the months ahead. Before we start tonight's awards program, I want to especially thank the many alumni who have stepped up this year by supporting current Webster students in need. Together with Webster faculty, staff, leaders, and board members, you have truly proven once a Gorlock, always a Gorlock. We are a family. So to the entire Webster family, I wish you a fine homecoming weekend. And to get us started tonight, I welcome Webster's president, Dr. Julian Schuster. Thank you, Dr. Strobel. Good evening, Webster alumni and friends. Although I cannot see all of your faces tonight, I can feel your presence in the occasion. The example of your leadership and impact is all around us, and it is well represented in tonight's honorees. As Beth said, the community of Webster University is a family, and in that respect, I want to take a moment to acknowledge the family of one of our honorees tonight. We were so sad to learn that Terry Gorski, our Loretto Award winner, passed away this summer. As you will see in the video, the legacy of his work lives on. We are very grateful to his son, TJ, and Terry's longtime business associate, Teresa Watson, for sharing their memories of Terry and for accepting this award on his behalf tonight. Like Terry, all of tonight's honorees make us proud to be associated with Webster. These alumni have excelled in community service, in social justice, in civic leadership, in leading in their chosen professions, and in engaging other alumni. We hope their stories inspire you. They have certainly inspired us. And now to introduce these outstanding alumni, please welcome Alex McEwen, the president of your Webster University Alumni Association. Thank you, Chancellor Strobel and President Schuster. It's my honor to introduce you to our four exceptional 2020 Webster University Alumni Award honorees. As you are about to see, each of these Webster alumni is truly deserving of their award. The first award is the Young Alumni Award. This recognizes an undergraduate alum from the last 10 years who elevates the profile of Webster through leadership in their profession and ongoing support of the university. It is my honor to congratulate Cody Renard Richard as the 2020 recipient. Cody graduated from Webster's Conservatory of Theater Arts in 2010 with a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Stage Management. Please join me in learning more about Cody and his many professional achievements. I'm originally from um, a little town right outside of Houston, Texas called Hockley. I grew up on a ranch. My entire family um, are cowboys and cowgirls. But throughout the years, you know, I uh, sort of found the theater when I got to high school. 
And in finding the theater, I sort of finally found a place where I felt this community, this connection of people who were just open and loving and fun. It was my sophomore year when I found stage management. My high school theater director, Carrie Wood, she pulled me aside one day and she told me, she said, I want you to stage manage um, our next production. She said, you have a way of making people listen to you without yelling. And that is something that has stuck with me all throughout my career and my life. And Mr. Woods, her husband, was also a part of the program. They kind of pushed me to want to attend college for stage management. Even so much so that they drove me to um, Lincoln, Nebraska for the International Thespian Festival. And then through that is where I met Peter Sargent, the late, great Peter Sargent. There was something special about Webster, something special about Peter and the way he spoke to me and the way he uh, kind of saw something in me at such a young age. And I knew from that moment, I was like, I have to go to the school, even before I was accepted to the school. There was something that was so exciting about starting something fresh. And I think that's why I was able to thrive so much at Webster. I was given free reign to just be me, and I love that. I took a trip to New York my sophomore year. I went and saw Avenue Q, and then I was reading the playbill, and I got to the part where the stage managers are. But I remember saying to my friends, I was like, my name's gonna be in one of these playbills one day. Yeah, I've been very fortunate, you know, in the 10 years that I've graduated Webster, I've worked on, I think, 11 or 12 Broadway shows. Um, I've done three Cirque du Soleil productions. I've done three of the live televised musicals. I worked for the Tony Awards. I remember specifically working on Motown the Musical uh, back in 2013, um, which uh, was three years after I had graduated from Webster. I experienced a lot of firsts on Motown, and that was the moment I realized that I was living my dream. Motown was the first time where I felt like I was actively a part of the team. But working on Motown was also the first time that I had done a show in New York where everybody around me looks like me. And that was an incredible experience. I remember walking out of the stage door and walking home and walking through Times Square and I stopped and called my mom and I was crying. And she's like, what is wrong with you, boy? And I told her, I was like, mom, I'm here. I'm doing what I told you that I would do. And we kind of sat there and we, we didn't say anything for a second. And then she told me that she was proud of me. And, and, and that moment felt so, it was so incredible. I'll never, I'll never forget that. Two of the biggest things that I enjoy doing is inspiring young kids, young students, particularly young black students, um, to chase their dreams. And the other thing is advocating for people who feel like they don't have a voice. It's taken me a long time to realize that I have a voice. And once I finally realized that, it, 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 it was like a light bulb went off. Whether it's, um, you know, speaking out against injustices or racism or just, you know, lending a hand to someone who, who's, not, who's afraid to talk about something. So it's always nice to be recognized or to be seen by someone. Um, and particularly by Webster, because Webster is where it all started for me. And the recent passing of Peter Sargent last year and celebrating the 50th anniversary, it had been so close to him. This is even more of an honor. It sort of feels like Peter's saying, I'm proud of you. It sort of feels like, you know, Peter's saying, uh, you're on the right track, keep going. Our next award is the Mary Elizabeth Newell Award, which recognizes an alum who has shown a high commitment and concern for Webster University over a significant period of time. It is my honor to congratulate Daryl Yates as the 2020 recipient of the Newell Award. Daryl received a graduate certificate in paralegal studies in 1999 and Master of Arts in Legal Studies in 2000. Join me in getting to know Daryl and his many contributions to Webster and our community.
I'm born and raised in Henderson, Kentucky. But my summers I spent in Corden, a town of maybe 800 to 1,000. And I spent so much time with my grandfather. There were times where my grandfather and I would wake up before everybody at the break of dawn and we would sit outside for hours at a time. I didn't understand it at the time, but what he was doing was just getting me to understand to enjoy the moment. Enjoying the moments that you have with people that you love. Me going into high school, I mean, I knew that I was a decent athlete, but I didn't really think I could go to college or I was college material. Going to Webster was a great choice simply because it gave me the opportunity to pursue something I never thought I would be able to pursue when I was coming out of high school. Webster afforded me the opportunity. I took advantage of it, and I've continued to give back to Webster in so many ways. I was walking across campus, and the young lady, Nicole Powell, stopped me and asked me if I wanted to come to a meeting, the African American Alumni Chapter meeting. And that changed everything for me. After receiving my degree, I became more involved with African American Alumni Chapter, being vice president, president, then to be a co-chair on the alumni, Western University Alumni Board of Directors. Not only one term, but I did it three different times. One of the good things that I did while I was being active with the AAAC as vice president and president was going down to help with Habitat for Humanity during the aftermath of Hurricane Katrina, which that was something that I will never ever forget. Currently, I'm a deputy juvenile officer for the St. Louis City Family Court 22nd Judicial Circuit. I've been there for 20 years. I enjoy the job. I love the job, simply because it gives me the opportunity to work with the community that I truly enjoy. So I come into the schools and help them understand what resources they have and ensure that the schools are providing those resources. I speak to the kids, I speak to the principals, I ensure that they're receiving the best education possible. With my involvement with Western University, I've been working with the golf coach, Andrew Belsky. And what we've been doing is teaching the kids that I work with on the basic fundamentals of how to play golf. Due to COVID this year, we weren't allowed to have the kids there. So we came together and decided on providing lunches for these particular needy families. I really, really enjoy seeing the kids grow because after 20 years, you start seeing the second and third generation of families. Everything been all right over the summer? All right, well, I'm glad to see you. To travel the world as much as I had, I'm just a small country boy. I never thought that this would ever happen to me when I was a young kid. But I am blessed enough to see that if you put it in your mind and you set immediate goals, anything can be accomplished. What makes me proud to be a Gorlock is having the opportunity to meet diverse people from all walks of life. And we are connected through Webster. Can't get any better than that. The Distinguished Alumni Award is the highest award presented by the Webster University Alumni Association, recognizing high achievements and significant contributions to society through civic, cultural, or charitable involvement. It is my honor to congratulate Michelle Eswine, the 2020 recipient of the Distinguished Alumni Award. Michelle received her Master of Business Administration in 1993 
Let's learn more about Michelle's career and contributions to women in business. I'm one of five children in my family. I would say we're all overachievers. My parents always told us to strive hard, work hard, and get a great education. I would say I had really two main interests um, in high school and really throughout my life that even continue today. One being music and the other being community involvement. In high school, I had received the um, Congressional Medal for Outstanding Volunteerism. I had participated and volunteered in a lot of different organizations. So I think, you know, doing that in high school and receiving that medal has really encouraged me to continue um, supporting different charities and being community involved. When I was um, starting out in the workforce when I was 16, uh, my first job actually was as a uh, model um, for Famous and Bar at the time. And I continued all the way through being a buyer for Famous and Bar um, through college. And I continued on that career path, but I really enjoyed seeing the ins and outs of how a business worked. When I was in college, I was approached by a company called Melvin Simon to help them market their malls in five states. And that really was the start of my first business, Unique Design Products, where I helped companies promote their business product and services in those five states. I realized I wanted to continue on with my education right after college and to have the nuances to understand how a business would run. And so I continued on my education at Webster University to get my master's degree in finance. The professors at Webster University have a career that they're doing during the day, but also teach full time in the evening. And so they would share real life experiences in the classroom as to the material that we were learning, how it would translate into the real workforce. Before I started Winning Women, I had won the Young Entrepreneur Special Recognition Award. And I also was appointed by the President of the United States to the National Women's Business Council. On that council, um, I was providing advice to both the President of the United States and to U.S. Congress on legislative issues. But part of my role was going around the country speaking with women. But what I found is that women were looking for help in other areas as well. Things like connecting with other women at that high level, looking for resources, um, finding a need for capital, and much more. And so that's when I started winning women to help give voice to those women who were making already an impact in their industry, but now to connect them and help them continue to grow. One of the most gratifying things to me is seeing women empowered and encouraged to collaborate and advocate for each other in these leadership positions. Uh, women face unique challenges in the sense that they're not always recognized for their expertise and contributions. And so I had started the Women Influencing Now, or the Win Awards, to recognize an executive woman, a woman entrepreneur, and a woman in public service for their economic contributions that they're contributing in their community. I think the three things that I'm most proud of is my family, uh, my husband and my three children, and especially my husband, who has encouraged me through all of this and growing my business. The other is winning women continue to grow, that not only was the need here locally in the state of Missouri, but it has expanded across the country and now seeing it across the world. And finally, being in higher education and continuing to teach students of all ages about entrepreneurship and that even if you're a woman, you can continue to grow your business very successfully. My parents have always encouraged me since I was very young to get involved in the community and share my talents and my treasures with others. They taught me never to be a bystander and if I saw something wrong, to get involved and try to make a difference in someone else's life. Our final award of the evening is the Loretto Award. This award recognizes an alum who carries on the community service and social justice values of the Sisters of Loretto, 
who founded Webster in 1915. It is my honor to congratulate the family, colleagues, and friends of Terrence Gorski, the 2020 recipient of the Loretto Award. Terry graduated in 1974 with a Master of Arts in Human Relations. Sadly, Terry died unexpectedly in July. Accepting the award on his behalf are his son, TJ Gorski, and Teresa Watson. Let's watch the tribute to Terry's amazing life, which was dedicated to counseling and advocating for people suffering from addiction. How are you doing? My name is TJ Gorski. I'm Terry Gorski's son, and I'm extremely honored to be here to accept this reward on my dad's behalf. Terry grew up in the city of Chicago. He was one of four children, two sisters and a brother. They were a Polish Catholic family, and he was an altar boy in the church. When he went to college, he uh, pledged a fraternity, the TKEs, and uh, he drank a lot and they told him he couldn't join the fraternity. His friend got in and he didn't. And on New Year's Eve, he quit drinking for the rest of his life. When they graduated college, him and his best friend, they got jobs uh, at Grant Hospital as aides in the alcohol unit. He was a very skilled counselor because he had a lot of intuition. He could figure out what made people tick and then when he wanted to further his education, he selected Webster University because they offered the master's in human relations where he could study people and thinking mechanisms and social change and how to create lasting change. My dad helped people. He taught people how to live life again. And what I mean by that is there are people who are truly lost and dependent on a substance to live. And he taught them that they could live without it and that you could live a happy, healthy life sober and that you could be around people that you cared about and repair past relationships. So he definitely just gave people the gift of life is what he did. The Synapse Corporation provides tools for clinicians and case managers to use on patients to take them through a process so they won't relapse. He has more books than I can remember that were translated in over 21 languages all around the world. His books are still being used in treatment centers to this day with his name on them. And it's a legacy that will just carry on way past what he did. And that's why he wrote them. In Reklava, Iceland, they used his model and the whole country was able to reduce their alcoholism rates. The president of Iceland uh, called him over and presented him with the Order of the Falcon, which is the humanitarian award. And he was turned into a knight and he's part of the Icelandic government. My dad didn't talk much about his accomplishments. I know he was very happy and proud of the fact that he was able to travel and that his books are translated all around the world. But the thing he was most proud of must have been his family and his children. I know that he valued his family above anything else. And I am just so proud that he spent his life doing something that he was passionate about, caring about the ones that were close to him, and just doing what he loved and enjoying life. I know that the world is a better place and that there are so many people that are still alive today because of the work that my dad did. And there will continue to be people that have lives tomorrow because of the work that he did yesterday. And not everybody gets to say that. I think that the Loretta Service Award was important to my father because it celebrated a lifetime of achievement. Not only that, but it took him back to where he started. And I think it was just a really good feeling for him to know that where he came from still remembered him. Um, I just wanted to say thank you for uh, remembering my dad and all that he did. Thank you for still honoring him with this award and letting us know that he's still remembered as his son. I greatly appreciate that.
Congratulations again to our four Alumni Award honorees. They all represent Western University's core mission to be global citizens and pursue individual excellence. And they fill us with the Gorlock pride. On behalf of Chancellor Strobel, President Schuster, and the Western University Alumni Association, thank you for joining us this evening. Have an outstanding weekend.